Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and I wanted to show you just a real quick way to do a sky swap. Now this is something that's popular in real estate photography, but you can use it for a lot of other stuff too. If you've ever taken a picture, say at a wedding or a family portrait out in a park someplace, and you're exposing for the people, you'll notice probably that the sky may be blown out. It's real hard to bring that sky back. So if you're shooting at golden hour, you know, late in the day, um, you're probably going to get that if you're in midday sun. It's going to be real hard to get that. So it's a common problem that you can have, but it's a real easy fix. Now, in real estate photography, there's a very common uh, way to do sky swaps uh, using uh, PPA sky swaps. It's kind of an automated way, and you can buy those uh, sky swaps. I'm going to show you a manual way to do this. It doesn't cost you anything at all. And it may seem a little bit more cumbersome at first, but it's actually very quick to do. I don't do a lot of sky swaps for my shoots, maybe one or two. Uh, you know for some of the exterior shots that may really need it. Um, so not really a, a huge amount of effort there. But the other thing is I wanted to show you when the intricacies of doing it and how then you could take some of these techniques, use it on maybe some PPA sky swaps or some other variations. But once again, this doesn't cost you anything at all to do. It's completely free and a lot of flexibility then on what to do. And once you get a little bit more familiar with Photoshop, and you may already be quite experienced with Photoshop, using this technique and some adjustment layers, you're going to get a lot of control over what you can do. So let's go ahead and do some sky swaps. Let's take a look. So this is a, uh, a kind of a problem shot. I'm using a monopod usually when I'm outside and I'm shooting in brackets. So I've got something if I needed to HDR it, there was one, there's kind of a darker one, shows the sky better, and here's a lighter one. Um, you can see that here where I exposed for the uh, for the house, the sky is completely blown out. And this is the typical problem. And yes, it is rotated. Now I've got a couple things I could do just in Lightroom if I wanted to fix this. One of the things I could do is I could say that I'm going to use a preset of mine. Over here, if you notice on the left, I've got these different presets. And one's called RE Exterior Overexposed, which this one is. If I click on that, brings it back. That's not really that bad of a looking picture, somewhat deliverable actually, um, that I could give to clients. What this did, let me just run through some of these presets for you. They're over here and I also have these on my blog which you can download over on my website at nathancoolphoto.com. Um, but a couple things I did here, I bumped the contrast up to six and then I uh, took the highlights down just a little bit. I could even take those down a little bit more we could see they kind of darken a little bit. I upped the shadows a little bit, and that's because I like to bring out the shadows from the front of the house. I upped the whites a little bit, brought down the blacks, brought up some clarity. These are just kind of common adjustments, but the biggest things, once again, like on all my presets, um, I enabled profile corrections, removed chromatic aberration, adjusted verticals. Without that, I'd be the funky looking, so um, it automatically adjusted verticals. Now I could make some kind of tweaks to this and whatnot. To get that sky to, to come back in, I used uh, the luminance slider over here and also the saturation. So what you can do to make this real easy is you click this little doodad over here when you'll see you're on luminance. I'm going to click on uh, this color of blue and now I'm going to bring my little wheel on my mouse down. And What that does, you can see it's actually moving that slider down. And um, so I can adjust and get that darker if I want to. And the same way with the saturation. I've got that still that same color selected. And so I could go ahead and I could raise that saturation. I've got some color coming in there, but it's kind of looking unnatural. Now, if I needed to, once again, let me reapply that um, over here. So we go back to the original settings. That's not too bad. I could probably um, uh, give that to, uh, to the client, you know, for an MLS picture. But to me, that still doesn't really pop. It really doesn't have a whole lot with it. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go back to where it is. And I'm going to start from scratch on this, okay? Let me go to a picture here. Um, actually, we can take this one uh, that I had. And let me bring it back to where we just imported it, which was there. So let's do some basic adjustments on this just to correct it so that we enable some of the profile corrections, remove any chromatic aberration, and I'm just going to adjust the verticals on it. Now the rest of this, I'm going to worry about adjusting after I do the sky swap. I'm going to bring that in, and I know that'll be fine. I want the blown out sky. Now this is going to be important. I do want this completely blown out. To help though a couple things, now that I actually have it as a raw file, and by the way, I'm always shooting in raw, not in JPEG. It gives me a lot of flexibility. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it up. So I've got the sharpening slider over here on the right. Bring that up, and I want to make sure I don't sharpen any of this sky. So, clicking on masking, holding down the Alt key, slide that until you see that completely go. So now I've got just this black. 
that's showing up and I know that uh, where it's black it's not being sharpened. So that's pretty good. I know that I've got some sharpening there and I'll do a few other just quick adjustments here. I know that's some pretty deep shadows on the house. I'm going to take a quick exposure brush to that and cover those shadows. So we can go ahead and do that. And I'm just doing these real quick before we put it in because this is not just to show sky squaps. This would actually be then a, a deliverable photo for our client. Okay. So we've got that done. Now, what I'm going to do is edit this in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and I'll right click on that and I'll say edit in and then edit in Photoshop CC. And it's going to go ahead and open that up. Now, as it does this back and forth, I'm basically working in TIFF format. So I am not losing anything. And once again, if you were going back and forth doing this with um, just your, uh, with a JPEG, you're, you're going to be losing a lot of detail. Um, so using this like that, I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a cloud. Now I've got a whole collection of clouds that I've shot. Uh, every time I'm outside, I see some clouds. I go ahead and collect them. Some are from uh, when I do landscape photography, and I'm going to show you that in other episodes too. Um, but here's one that I really like, um, this particular one. You, you might see this in some of my photos. I do this kind of comment for clients. It was a beautiful day while I was out hiking uh, in around uh, Wildwood Park out here. So I know these are from the area. I also know where the sun is. And so ethically speaking for an MLS picture, this is just basically shooting this on a different day. These clouds are the same ones around all these houses that are all the time. That's why I also suggest you get clouds from your area. You will see a difference. Something to notice on clouds too. Let's take a close look at this guy. Notice how there's a difference at the bottom in the color compared to the top. Now this is going to be very important when we go to blend this. And it's something that PPA SkySwap does also take into account, but it's on how much of this is left at the bottom. But things like that to make it look natural are very important. So I once again I encourage you to get some of your own cloud shots from the areas that you're shooting. But now that I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is just drag this guy. By the way, I'm using VNXI over here. It's just a Nikon's uh, view program. It gives me a, a very accurate uh, depiction because I know how to read the uh, TIFFs and the RAW files very well working with Nikon. So I'm going to drag that over, put that in as a new layer. That's fine. But I'm going to go ahead and see where I want to put that. So I'm going to drag the opacity down on that and see where I want to put that guy. I want to put those clouds up let's say like right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and just resize this guy in there so that he kind of fits. The one thing that's important is I don't want the mountains in the background to be showing in the picture. Those aren't going to be edited in. So I got to make sure that those aren't anywhere to be seen. So that looks good to me. Good. Boom. Place it. I'm going to set the opacity back to 100% and now we're fine. Now I'm going to go layer, mask, hide. He's done. Go back to my original picture here on that layer. I'm going to go select and I'm going to select color range. And I'm going to click on this overexposed area and you can see what it's selecting up here. Now I want a good blackness around here. And this up here, this fuzziness slider, this is how much leeway it's going to give me. And you do want a good amount of fuzziness. If I'm all the way down here, you can see there's not enough. I'm really not getting a lot in there. But this is probably pretty good uh, for what we're looking at. The big thing too I'm looking at are the trees here. I want to be able to see how much of that is really going to get around those trees. And, and that's probably pretty good right about there. So let me go ahead and say OK. So now you see the marching ants and it's going all around the trees, it's going around the house and that all looks good. There's a whole bunch of stuff down here but don't worry about that. We're going to take care of that easy enough. So now we want to feather that selection. So we go select, modify, feather. I'm going to feather that by just one pixel and that will give it that non cutout type of view. Go back to the mask for our sky reverse the, the default colors, you select default by D, X reverses them, and then, excuse me, then what you want is to select the gradient tool. And this is then pretty simple. What you want to do is you want the gradient tool. It gives you then a, a difference in color based on what the bottom of the sky would normally be. Remember the bottom of the sky is a different color than what it is near the top. So I'm going to go ahead and start dragging right about here. This would be a, a nice low point. And I'm holding down my shift key so I have it going directly straight up. And then boom, that much sky comes in there. I like that gradient pretty much. I'm going to try it again though. Control Z to undo. And I'm just going to go ahead and just give it a very small gradient going up. Okay. Now if you notice, I can go ahead and hit now just to unselect this control D. Okay. Now that sky's in there. It's not looking too bad, but there's a couple issues if I go back and forth with it. Um, a little bit of this probably got caught on the house. Um, 
but uh, I don't really see it in this case, but if it did, all that I have to do is select my eraser tool, I hit X to reverse my color so I'm back over here, and then what I can do is I can erase it where I need to and make sure that none of that's on the house. In this case, there really isn't any. A little bit maybe uh, got on the roof there. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at how this did around the trees. So that's not too bad. We can see that um, there's a little bit that uh, is missing from the tree detail. For an MLS shot, that's probably not all that worrisome. But what I do to make it blend even more is I'm going to change the fill, not the opacity, but I'm going to change the fill and knock it down to about 85%. Now you notice that's starting to look a little bit more natural. Remember before I did the fill it looked like this and it was a little bit harsher around those trees too. If I go in 100% we can see yeah, it's, there's a little bit of leafy stuff not in there. As soon as I put in the fill it brought out kind of a little bit of a better blend. Now what's happening is the background layer is blending with that layer. But look how nice and clean it is here. A couple of things here, notice it didn't really fill in all that well here because remember I was doing that gradient. So what you can do, you can go back over here, select your brush tool, I hit B for brush, and I'm going to put the real low flow, like about maybe 3% 3 per, 3 flow. And I'm just going to go in here and just dot it. Boop, 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 boom. And that was it. I just dotted it real quick before and then after. Now, a little bit of that got on that tree. I'm not too worried about it, but you can do that to your heart's content. Now, that's probably pretty good, but I'm going to pump it up even more, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go layer, excuse me, I hit the wrong one, layer, and then I'm going to go new adjustment layer, and I'm going to select a brightness contrast layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select this little doodad here which says add a clipping mask so it's only affecting the sky layer. I'm going to up the brightness to let's say 10. Boom, nice bright sky, not looking bad. Up the contrast, I think on this I'll up it about 10, adds a little bit of blue to it. I also kind of want to saturate that layer a little bit to kind of let it match here. An easy way to do that is I'm going to actually put in a levels layer. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer, levels layer, and I'm going to go ahead and add the clipping mask once again so it only affects the sky. I'm going to bring up the darkness a little bit, right? That brings out a little bit more blue. I'm not going to bring up the lights in this case. I could. It would add a little bit more contrast, but it will blow out those clouds, which are already a little bit too bright. And then I'm just going to add one other adjustment layer real quick with layer adjustment. And I'm going to put in hue saturation. So now I just bump up the saturation just a tab, just a boop. That's about it, okay? So without the adjustment layers, it would look like this, right? And now one thing I'm noticing is that some of that sky got caught on the yard and I noticed it right here when I was doing the adjustment layer. So I'm going to go back in here, take my eraser at 100% and just make sure that none of it is down here and that's fine. Okay, um, the hue saturation layer also, got to make sure that he is on clipping mask, good. All right, so now that we've got that, that looks pretty good to me. Now, I might want to come back and edit this. Normally, I would flatten my image and save it back into, into uh, it would go back into Lightroom, but this time I'm going to save it as a PSD. That way, I can just come back and save it as I want to. So I'm just going to go, you know what? We're going to do just this, save it as PSD. That's fine. Boom. Okay. Now, now that it's saving, it'll also show up in Lightroom the same way. So it's not that I have to have a TIFF file. I have a lot more flexibility this way. So I can keep going back and forth. Later on, I need to use this for something. I don't necessarily have to use Lightroom. I could just go ahead and use uh, Photoshop. So now let's go back to Lightroom and take a look at what happened. It loaded it automatically up. Now let's bring some magic into it. I'm going to use a couple of my different presets. I'm going to take a look and say, you know what, my RE full bump is pretty good. I like that one. You might remember I use that for a lot of interior stuff. And of course got the name from Rich Baum, B-A-U-M. Check his videos out on YouTube, really cool stuff. I'm going to click that real quick and boom, look at that, brought it out real nice. The only thing I would do here then is say, you know what, just my final stuff I would do, like cropping out some of that curb didn't look all that well. Bring that in like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, so if you remember where we were before, we started out with a very simple basic picture. It looked like that. Uh, we lightened it up a little bit and, and uh, we ended up with something kind of looking like this, a little bit kind of overexposed. But then we took and we put in the sky swap and this is it. That looks good. Let's go file, export, export that puppy out. And we'll just export that as 0001. For, for whatever reason, and we'll export that out. And once it's exported out, 
Bam! That's what we have. One simple sky swap. Now once again, that may have seemed overly complex to do a sky swap if you've ever used PPA sky swaps. It didn't really take me that long. Now I'm talking through a lot of it, but a lot of times I'm just using keystrokes. I add in those adjustment layers in no time. The gradient helps it fill in. The biggest trick on this is using the select color range and then making sure that fuzziness slider is over so far. It doesn't really take that long. You didn't have to buy uh, PPA sky swaps. It might be difficult for you if you've never used Photoshop, but you get some practice into it and you'll be able to have a lot more flexibility on what you want to do. You could also then start using these techniques on other things. Like I mentioned, whether it was this or PPA, you can use it on wedding photos, you can do it on family portraits when uh, you see the sky is blown out behind you, a lot of variety of different things. So hopefully this was a good tutorial and you liked it. If you want to see more like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Coming up soon, I'm going to be showing more of how I light some of the stuff for real estate so you can get into using lights if you want to and not get over complex. Right now though, this is a very simple one. No lights in involved, just a little bit of Photoshop, Lightroom if you want to, and you got yourself some sky swaps. I encourage you to get out there and shoot as many skies as you can. And when you see the clouds out there and you have opportunity, collect them. You'll thank yourself later. You'll thank, yourself, you'll, you'll thank yourself later that you did. Sorry about that. So until next time, thanks again for watching. Take care and get out there and shoot something.